Hey everyone, welcome back to a whole new exciting session from Edureka. My name is Vajiha and in this session, you'll be learning about dependency injection in Angular. So let's move ahead and see what's in store for you guys. We shall first begin by understanding what is dependency injection and the drawbacks of not using DI. Then we'll understand DI both as a design pattern and as a framework. Following that, I'll be explaining what are services in Angular and then we'll be implementing all of this within a small project. So before we begin, just make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the latest Edureka videos. Also, if you are interested in getting an online training certification in Angular, check out the link given in the description box below. Okay, so without any further delays, let's move on. So what exactly is dependency injection? In Angular, dependency injection is a vital application design pattern. In this coding pattern, classes are injected with the required dependencies rather than hard coding them within the class itself. These dependencies are usually objects or services that are required by the component class. So when exactly should you use DI or dependency injection? As mentioned earlier, dependency injection is a robust technique that can be incorporated into the logic of an Angular application in multiple situations. Some of such scenarios can be when you have to inject some data related to the configuration information such as URLs, drivers, usernames, passwords, etc. when multiple components have the same dependency or when you need to inject distinct implementations of the same dependency into one or more components or when you have to make use of different instances of the same component with distinct configurations. So now that you have a basic idea of when to use DI, let me also tell you guys that it is not always necessary to use it. In case you know that your application will never require different implementations or configurations, you can simply skip dependency injection. So now let's move on and see what are the drawbacks of not using DI. I've already mentioned a number of cases where dependency injection is very useful. So what happens when you do not use it in these scenarios? To explain this, let me give you an example. Let's say we have a mobile class that depends on other classes that is the processor class, the display class and the camera class. All the three classes that is the processor class, the display class and the camera class are being initialized within the constructor of the mobile class itself. So in this case, if you make changes to any of the classes that is the processor, display or the camera class, you will have to make the corresponding changes within the constructor of the mobile class as well. So this clearly shows that our code is not flexible. Each time you make change to the dependency, you will have to modify the mobile class as well. Also, this code cannot be used for testing purposes. The reason is that when you are testing, you give various different parameters and check whether your application is functioning correctly or not. So in this case, testing cannot be used. So using dependency injection as a design pattern to solve this problem. So like I've already told you all, when you make use of dependency injection, the class will not define its dependencies, but it will acquire them from external sources. So we can rewrite the code for the mobile class we saw previously. In this case, the dependencies are no more created by the mobile class, but it takes them from elsewhere. So as you can see, processor, display and camera are passed as a parameter to the constructor rather than instantiating it within the constructor itself. This way, we will be able to solve both the issues we saw earlier. The reason is you will have the space to make changes to all the dependencies easily. All you have to do is define the parameter and then pass it as a dependency. Therefore, we can conclude that using dependency injection makes the code very efficient and usable, binds loosely coupled components effectively, increases modularity, applications become flexible and robust, and also it's easy to test and maintain your applications. Dependency injection as a framework. So until this stage, you have understood that by creating dependencies outside the mobile class, you can make changes to the dependencies without having to change the mobile class itself. As you all know, the parameters you are using over here need to be defined before you actually use them. In the previous example, we just had three dependencies for the mobile class, but in real, you will have a lot more. You will have many other dependencies such as RAM, memory, hot disk, speaker, microphone, etc. Therefore, it is very clear that it gets really difficult to manage the code as the number of dependencies increase. This is where the DI framework or the dependency injection framework intervenes. This framework includes an injector, which is the container that is used to register all your dependencies. This way, the DI framework will manage all the dependencies of your application. Okay, so before moving on further in the session, let us understand what is a service in Angular. Services in Angular can be anything such as values, functions or features that are required by the Angular application. 
service classes have a narrow and well-defined purpose components can delegate tasks to services these services can perform any task like returning output fetching data from the given url checking the validity of the user's input etc an injectable service class can be configured to do any of these tasks for any component in your application not just this your application can also be made more versatile by injecting distinct providers of similar kind of services so what is the need to have services a component class is meant to follow the single responsibility principle which is to control the views this is the reason why services are kept separate from the component another advantage is that when you create a service you'll be able to make use of them anywhere they are required therefore you do not have to rewrite the code keeping it free from redundancy so when do you think you must use services services can be used in different scenarios to serve different purposes such as to perform application specific logic distributing data between multiple components or to communicate with external servers in angular these services are implemented using dependency injection okay so now let's move on and create a small application that will help you understand dependency injection and services in angular so what i'm going to do is open up my command prompt so i've already created a project over here so what i'm going to do is just type in ng generate service followed by the name of the service i'll just name it as ns you can give any name of your choice guys so when the process is completed you will see that your application will have two new files that is the ns.service.ts file and the ns.spec.service.ts file these are the typescript file and the test files respectively i'll open this project in visual studio code and within the app folder you'll be able to see that the new service has been added in case you're very new to angular and you do not know how to create an angular application you can check out the angular 8 tutorial video from edureka so as you can see over here the at the rate injectable decorator is present this decorator specifies that the class that follows is an injectable service class so within this ns service class what i'm going to do is create a small function you can give any name of your choice so i'll just type in get message and then i'll just type in a single return statement in this function which will be welcome to edureka once this is done i'll just save it so now the service class is ready but you cannot make use of this as of yet the reason is the service injector needs to be registered within the provider to register it you can specify within the providers of the components or the modules the availability of the service depends on where it has been registered so consider the application tree as the one that you see on the screen over here at the topmost level is the app module then is the app component and the app component has two sub components that is sub component 1 and sub component 2 sub component 1 has another component x as its child so you can register the service at any level that is the sub component level the app component or the app module level this depends on the requirements of your application if you register it at the sub component level only those classes that inherit the class of this sub component can make use of the service similarly if you register the service in app component level you can make use of the service within all its children if you register the service within the app module the service can be used throughout the components that come under this module so the best place to register the service is within the app module itself for maximum usability therefore what i'm going to do is open the app module.ts file and over here within the providers i'm going to type in the name of the class that is ns service also don't forget to import the ns service class The reason why it's auto imported over here is because I've added the auto import extension. In case you do not have this, you will have to manually import this class. In case you want to add this extension, all you have to do is click on the extensions icon and then search for the extension that you want and then install it. So now let's get back towards our application. So up till here what we've done is created a service and then we've registered it within a provider. The next thing to do is declare the service as a dependency. Once the service has been registered, you can make use of the service by declaring it as a dependency. So what I'm going to do is open the app component.ts file. 
and over here I'll import the service that I've just created. So I'll just type in import. So I've imported the NS service class. Within this app component class, I'll define a new parameter called as the message parameter. This parameter will be of the type string. This is because the value that I've specified within the function I created in the service class is a string. So I'll just type in string equal to. Next, within the constructor class, I'll create a private parameter and that will be an S service. This parameter will be of the type an S service. Next, I'll make use of the ng on init lifecycle hook. It will be of the return type void. And within this, I'll just type in this dot message equals this dot ns service dot get message. Okay, so I'll just save this. I'll save this as well. Now I'll open the app component dot html file. I'll select everything except the last line and I'll delete it. Then within an H1 tag, I'll use the interpolation syntax and I'll type in message, which is the message to be returned. In case you do not know how to make use of interpolation in Angular, you can check out the Angular directives video from Edureka. Okay, so I'll save this and I'll get back to my command prompt and I'll just type in ng serve. Ifano. So as you can see on the screen, I have the output as welcome to Edureka. Now, since I had specified the hyphen O extension with the ng-serve command, the development server is run directly on localhost port number 4200. In case you do not make use of the hyphen O command, it's not going to open this directly. You can create as many services as you require and inject them in any component of your choice. So this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any doubts or queries, please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. We'll be back with more and more exciting sessions, but till then, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!